Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing today? This is Con Ulrich coming to you with some more Company of Heroes 2 action. It's a 1v1, and today the map itself is Faminville Approach. And the 1v1 that we got going on is, first of all, a hopefully no bugs splatted game going on between Talisman and the Blue Trunks playing as the Soviets. And his opponent playing in the Red Trunks is Insane Dev M rocking it out as the Wehrmacht. And, um,. Quick thing before we get into the commanders, you guys the other day saw a player come on with the name Cash Grab Dev M. And there was at least one comment where people were like, Hey, this is not insane Dev M. And my only response to that is, I know. I'm very aware of that. Actually, I had a uh, very good conversation with somebody who passed along the possible, possible identity of this individual, but you know. Cannot speculate, but I can't say for sure it's not this gentleman right here. Especially not these squad right here. These guys have nothing to do with it. They just obey whatever Dev M tells them to do. But let's get more aware of what's going on here. First things first, we are going to see that Talisman has made a scout sniper squad. And he's got three interesting decisions today. He's got Shock Rifle Frontline, he's got Len Lease, and he's got Soviet Reserve Army. Now, I'd be totally stoked to see Soviet Reserve Army. And there it is. Okay, cool. So Soviet Reserve Army is the call. Uh, might be getting to see some conscript assault packages here. But right now, what we are seeing is the scout sniper squad getting cut to pieces by these pioneers as they charge after. Gwena just curving around from the south. Will we see a dead scout sniper squad? This has already put Talisman way, way behind because of his decision. But no, it does look like that scout sniper is going to get away. Now, another thing to note is that Dev M, we'll get to his commanders in a second, does have a bulletin for his sniper hero, so a little bit more armor as he tries to hunt down visibly sight Zev's uh, protégés there. And we are going to see a sniper coming out for the Wehrmacht. Interestingly enough, Insane Dev M opened up with Machine Gun Grenadier Squad into, well, into now a sniper. And you have to wonder, is that because of the Scout Sniper Squad, or was he planning to build that the entire time? I don't know. Let's take a quick look at his commanders now, shall we? So, he's got Mechanized Assault Doctrine, he's got Mobile Defense, and he's got Lightning War. Now, the first time I'm looking through his commanders here, thinking to myself, against Soviet Reserve Army, what would I want to run? A simple answer to that is, I'm not 100% sure, considering that right now he is up a fair chunk here. Uh, he's getting even further and further up as his sniper is starting to just get a ton of kills against these penal battalion guys right hanging out in the middle part of the map. They try to get inside this garrison, one guy falling right as the other three cross the threshold. That seems a very, very hard cheese to swallow. And we see this MG42, which has snuck out over here to this usually northern player's expansion fuel. They're going to kind of shamble back over here to the center part of the map and take out this godhouse. So this is going to be fantastic for them. one nothing cap over to the Germans. In the meantime, a combat engineer is looking to kind of cut down on the German war machine. He's not trying to upgrade just yet, and that's just lucky right there. So he really could fly into this and go for the life to mechanize company. But I guess for right now, um, content to play it a little bit slower. Peanut Battalion, though, is starting to put some rounds downrange into, this, into these Grenadiers, but being supported by this particular MG42, it might be a little hard for these guys to stay in the field without more assistance. Now, Talisman, in the meantime, um, he's got a fair chunk of manpower that he's finally using. So we have another Penal Battalion squad coming on in. And I don't know if he really should just kind of back up and reinforce the Scout Sniper. Because all it will take is one shot from that German Sniper. He's got five kills. Uh, we're now finally seeing the Scout Sniper Survivor falling back. Dude, reinforce, please. You're killing me right now. Mentally, I'm just, I'm, I'm shaking on the inside. But the Germans, oddly enough, do have a numbers advantage on the field. That almost never happens. And now with a moderate lull, let's think about this for a second. Well, the Germans control a huge chunk of the field, so he really could go for a late game tiger tank. So we could go either Mechanized Assault or Lightning War. And I think he just saw his manpower drop, so we're going to see a bunker. Okay, a very early bunker at that. And why the heck not? He controls a hefty portion of it. He doesn't control the southern munitions, even though he probably could. 
and, and the North, you will control the Northern one pretty quickly. But it's going to be medics, and that's exactly what he needs to kind of keep his troops in tip-top shape. In the meantime, this MG42 is going to lay down a curtain of fire that will keep these penal battalion troops hugging the dirt. And indeed, that's the first thing they're going to be doing. They're going to back up quickly after that, dropping, what, two models in really, really short order. This guy's getting cut to shreds. You know, in the north, we'll see penal troops pressuring these grenadiers and indeed forcing those men away. And there, finally we see a medic, at least. Finally, we see him also... Um, reinforcing this scout sniper which will make him a little bit more durable as this German sniper starts to get more and more work done now where did where was that TM35 mine okay down here to the south interesting decision it's usually not what you see here but this is a nice kind of emergency thing in case the Germans try to, try to swing around with a tank in the later stages of the game Grenadiers, in the meantime, though, um, push down to the Soviet expansion fuel, and we'll be taking that again, which is going to be kind of embarrassing, uh, as <laughs> Insane DevM just continues to have a stranglehold on this map. The Life the Mechanized Company is going on up as well, and I'm wondering if DevM will even consider bringing any commanders in. At the moment, he doesn't have to. Nine kills on that sniper. Uh, by comparison, being out another minute or so earlier, the scout sniper squad's only got four. And that's kind of, you know, hard to really take. Worth noting as well, we see a bunch of S mines over here on top of this fuel point, but they are also very, very talented hazard removal kits coming out from this combat engineer squad. I don't know. Were the Grenadiers trying to shoot that over the house into the back door? Because if so, that would have been a, a remarkably prescient idea. But for the time being, we just see the Soviets desperately trying to re-seize this area here. Now, this sniper is here. And he's just out of range. And scout snipers are going to try to move forward and can't quite do that. Bad idea indeed. I think, pretty pretty sure, yes, he does in fact see that, that's good, alright, meanwhile over to the western side, we'll see combat, uh, excuse me, penal battalion troops duking it out with grenadiers, and one thing to remember about these guys is that now that they have that veteran C1, to the last man makes them awesome, so weapon accuracy, rate of fire, and quote, survivability, I think it's received accuracy, though I'm not 100% sure, I'm sure somebody out there will tell me if I'm incorrect. 426 to 496, though. It's a 2 to 1 cap um, in favor of the Germans. The scout sniper squad getting shot on retreat by this sniper. And a 222 is out as well. My question is will we see attempts with satchel charges? Or are we going to see a legit upgrade trying to find. Some light vehicles. I'm, I'm, I'm a little curious. Actually, you know what? Bringing these partisan tank hunters would be kind of fun. Might be a good idea, actually. Now, one thing I'm not seeing right now is I'm not seeing any conscripts on the map, and I think that's kind of a mistake. House might go down. Yes, there it goes. So the god house is gone. So that's going to be pretty good for the Germans, I would... Excuse me, for the Soviets, I would suggest. I'm so used to seeing the Germans as blue for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's just Casablanca that's coming to mind. I don't know. Um, meanwhile, to the southwest, we're seeing the Soviets considerably retaking the map. Not up to the north, mind you, but they finally have their expansion fuel back under their control. And although these Grenadiers will quickly decap it, at least taking it for a little bit of time will be good for morale and good for the future of the Soviet people. And there are the partisan tank hunters... Faust comes in immediately, slams into the side of the 222, so one more round might be enough to take it out. Question is, will it get off? And no, doesn't seem to be in the cards as of right now. Enemy forces are attempting to capture our territory. That's one thing, okay, I, I've always kind of enjoyed the, the, the partisan commander himself. And uh, not just the partisan tank hunters, I mean, those partisans by themselves, first of all, come up with massive amounts of firepower. The PPSs are just almost without peer. In the context of this game. 
But what's more, they just do, they just it, it just rings so true for me. They're glass cannons. They come up, they fire a curtain of fire. I could have probably worded that better. They, but they fire off this massive salvo and they pray and spray and pray to God they hit something. The enemy is taking what we have secured. Because if they miss, it's god awful. Already that we're going to see Deva is going for that lightning war doctrine. Are we going to see upgrades? Yes, we've seen Kavara 43 upgrades. So looking forward to seeing that, um, how do you call it? Uh, interrogation specialty would be kind of fun. I mean, obviously not for the target, but uh, fun nevertheless. Out of control, 222 is down, so Dev M takes a gut shot while the Soviets celebrate their victory. Worth noting in the meantime, too, that the, these Grenadiers right here are taking some nasty, nasty casualties. But where are we in terms of veterancy? Okay, so the Germans are vetting up nicely. We are seeing some really, really great veterancy being gained across the board. Um, the most disappointing would be this machine gun and this Grenadier squad. This Grenadier is the lone Grenadier, for that matter. Um, and we're going to see a pop for rapid conscription. So I don't know if we're trying to uh, just generate those squads or what the deal is. The enemy has taken our supply but six soldiers is an awful lot to lose. 409 to 40, uh, excuse me, to 446 though. Um, what had been a two to nothing cap at minimum, I think is going to just become a two to one in favor of the Germans. And after, what, about 40 seconds? No new squads are being released. The talisman right now is I think is just trying to convert some extra munitions into troops. And frankly, he could use them and giving them PPSs would be fan freaking tastic. Heck, he could even lose his entire squad if he wanted to. I'm not sure why he would, but it's possible, and that's the important thing, right? There we go. There's a conscript squad. And it's super, super cheap to pick up those PPSs as well, so 40 munitions is practically free. It also means that Talisman has lost six men during the last minute or so. I'm getting the sense that's going to happen one more time here. We are losing territory. 30 seconds to lose some more men? I, I, it's always surprised me having an ability that rewards you from losing your troops. Um, I, I've always been kind of re reluctant to play with that kind of ability, but some people, for some people it really works. Now unfortunately, um, he might end up dropping this combat engineer squad. Nope, the guy's going to get away, if barely. And it would also be nice to see Talisman tech up as of right now, he's still working off just a Special Rifle Command, which I think is a giant mistake. He does have some more TM-35 mines down, and that's good. So, uh, a lot of dives to pick up his troops could be stopped. And that, that's probably a pretty solid idea right there. And conscripts that he did have did go down, so that that is a, a shame. We now have access to additional battlefield options. How about this? Will he throw down the 152? My guess is no, but I think it'd be kind of fun to see it nevertheless. Um, penal troops might be able to pick off this Grenadier on retreat. How about this guy? Nope. Okay. The German army is collapsing a little bit. There goes one squad. And combat engineers, you finally got to start to build something? No, not yet. That's irksome. How are we doing for veterans over here now? So 17 kills on these snipers against their opposing 32. So, quality doesn't make up for quantity in this case, and you can tell that right now. Oh, wait, wow, he popped it almost immediately after that. So, 120 seconds again is on up here. And the Soviets are finally building the Tank Battalion Command. There we go, that's one. Uh, but in the meantime, Dev M is bringing in an Ostfind, and that could be kind of dicey to deal with. Yes. There are TM-35 mines all over the place, um, and there are the Soviet tank hunters. But if he's going to go through that, he's, he better expect to lose a fair number of troops. I 
I really would like to see the 152. I feel like it doesn't happen often enough. I'd be very amused by that. Here comes the Ospin, though. He's getting himself locked and loaded, and he's... Oh my gosh, he's blown to pieces. This vetted up squad of penal battalion troops. The question is, will he rotate and come over top of these mines? Oh, there goes one, and he actually blows up the mine by accident. So he knows now that uh, there are dangers lurking throughout this area. But um, Dev M is under a trip cap right now as we speak. 385 to 395. The Soviets are, are within striking distance of the lead. And okay, these guys have found out the sniper are not going to be able to really pressure him. And while the 120 munitions was spent, we're only going to see a single squad of conscripts coming of it. North, how are we doing here? Okay, so the Grenadiers do have... Something just blew up. I don't know what it was. But I can tell you, whatever was there is no longer there. Okay, so some poor Germans got taken out by that. Not just a little bit, just rocked completely. And Talisman's going to be bringing in an SU-85, more than enough to take out the, the opposing Ostfund. question is... How much is he going to lose in the meantime until that comes out? Because this Ostfind already has four kills and is well on his way to getting that first star of veterancy. Speaking of snipers, though, 34 to 19. There are people that decide to play with snipers super early on, and it's a very, very brave idea. Um, if you micro well enough, I mean, it's fantastic. But they force you to give up way too much territory early on for me. Maybe I'm saying that though too because my micro is not always the best by using them. But here comes the SU-85. He is on the field right now and although there are teller mines being placed to the north, indeed right by what used to be the S minefield, um, it does not seem like Talisman is too particularly concerned as SU-85 is kind of crunching across some fences here and there. First round, gets fired into the dirt. So we can definitely tell how well this is going to go already. There we go, much better. SU-85 realizes how he's supposed to be using his cannon after all, throwing around into the front armor of the Ostfind, while the rest of the German army, excuse me, German army, manages to really aggress against the Soviets. Rifle grenade doing almost nothing over here, taking off some health, but that is literally it. Meanwhile, the Germans lose control of their only VP, so it's soon to follow. But it looks like it's going to be at least a one-to-one -one for the time being, although not 100% sure on that, because I imagine we will see these brave grenadiers moving forward to seize this territory for the Fatherland. Pack 40 is also on the field. And the question, I guess, is... Sniper in the meantime, it's one after another, and there it goes. So well shot there, incendiary explosive round does take out the Soviet snipers, and with that though, we are going to see a demotion down to conscripts. It would be really nice to see some of these conscripts, or heck, even these penal troops getting upgraded. It'd be really, really nice. As of right now though, we're not seeing that. We might see a Grenadier squad go down, but I think it's highly unlikely. And indeed, we have at 19 minutes, 380 to 340. The Germans are making a comeback here, but it's not as marked as I'm sure they would like it to be. Grenadier's falling back in disarray. This sniper in the meantime, 40 kills. Definitely the deadliest man on the entire map. He is the deadliest warrior. Now, anybody who's actually watched that show will probably laugh about how this entire map is going. Um, but I kind of like the German composition, even though they have given up a great deal of AT by putting in two Ostvins as opposed to a later game Tiger tank. This Pack 40 should be more than enough to deflect and even push back this SU-85. These Ostvins are doing more than enough, I would also argue, 
to take on the Soviet Red Army. Grenadiers charging in after the Soviet partisans trying maybe to pick up a free Panzer Shrek. That will not happen, though. In the meantime, SU-85 finds the Zostrin in the flank and will throw at least one round down towards it. But despite the fact that he's been getting hammered by that tank destroyer, the Ostman just kind of shrugs it off and walks away. In the meantime, we will see Machine Guns going to put some fire down on these retreating penal troops. And two squads that are going to run for the hills, while a third one falls back in the face of this newest addition to the Wehrmacht of War Machine. Now, a stone gets thrown from right here, and that guy apparently has got quite an arm, so that thing's going to get thrown a huge distance. Um, and the Soviets are going back to their initial control of the map, which is to say, not very much at all. They do have a nice fallback position, but unfortunately what we are not playing here is we are not playing the complete and total wholesale destruction of your opponent. No sir, instead we are kind of just dealing with those victory points, and that lead is getting more and more scanty all the time. Now I'm kind of wondering if um, Talisman is trying to bank on the fact that nobody usually makes a scout sniper team this late. I mean, it's 20 minutes into the game. Most of those guys are very much outdated by now. Um, but they've already announced their position and announced that they're even on the field with that whole first shot. They have a headshot, but they paid for it by giving away the surprise factor. Because that's a mistake. And now we have a trip cap, and again, a ever-growing lead for the Wehrmacht. 320 to 340 now. Dev M might be able to kind of ride and just coast the rest of the way into the end of the map. Of course, that, that is suggesting an awful lot. What I'm disappointed with right now is I'm not seeing a lot of conscript usage nor am I seeing any kind of squad upgrades, which is making me really kind of upset. Grenadiers going to back away. I kind of thought maybe they were going to toss out a grenade at the scout sniper team, but they do not. They decide that discretion is, in fact, the better part of Valor. And the super, super scary sniper claims his 46th scalp. Now, Grenadiers, um, well, they have the Kvea 43s, and with the help of the Ostvins, they're just going to chew through that penal troop. Territory. Yes, the enemy is taking your territory, but considering how much territory you have, you can deserve and give up, really, some of the territory taken. Pack 40, though, does find itself a little bit too far forwards, and this MG is really out of position. He's to the far, far, far south of the map, backing up the second Ostvind. Okay, and this guy has picked up his first star veteran. See, the other Austin charges on in, eager to get some blood. Doesn't manage to do a whole lot of it, though. We'll probably get hit in the rear by this SU-85. Yep, rear armor hit. That's bad. But now he's chasing in after the Soviet tank hunters, and maybe, just maybe, he might be able to convert. Nope, never mind. They're going to get away. Pack 40 in the meantime, is hanging out in the rear, covering any retreat that needs to be had. Worth noting that um, Dev M does have a stupid close air support. However, he's not behind, nor does he really need to invest 200 munitions to take out one SU-85. But he'll do it anyway, it seems. Question is, will it be enough? I don't... It may not be enough. Okay, it's close, but it's not going to be enough. I think the SU-85 now might just be... No, it's not. That's actually really funny. I mean, funny for anybody that's not a Soviet vehicle. He's going to hang out here until this thing goes down. The enemy is taking our territory. Nope, not happening yet. Not happening yet. Okay, that's fine. What we will have in the meantime is we'll have a charge of one Ostvin. He's got 14 kills already. And despite taking rounds from the Soviet tank hunters, Austin comes forward just to chew away at the scout sniper. Health. Enemy forces are securing our territory. 
Meanwhile, to the south, though, penal troops are advancing again, taking back this fuel position in favor of the communists, as is this one down here, seizing this VP. The problem with that is that there's still a boogeyman on the loose, and with 51 kills, he is the deadliest thing this side of the Pecos River. And I believe we will be seeing some of his handiwork coming rather quickly. Grenadiers are going to kind of give him a nice hit point sponge. Soak up a lot of the initial attention. I was hoping for half a second we were going to see a rifle grenade, but we are not. Instead, these penal guys are going to bolt, and I don't think the sniper's going to take a shot as they go. I would say it's just as well, but at the same time, I kind of feel like most engagements in this map have been just obviously in, in favor of Dev M. He's just controlled the entire battle space so, so well. Um, it's been helped along by the fact that Talisman has not made any light tanks. He's still only made one heavy tank. Uh, and frankly, he's been going for either a Kadusha just to clear away part of this area or, or a T-34. A Kadusha might be good to take out this either these garrisons as well as his pack 40 um but that's not happening as of right now indeed we're just seeing him getting cut to pieces and i think the other major death here is now first of all going to be this tiger coming in but also the fact that talisman has not really upgraded any of his troops at all which boggles my mind because um penal guys are really quite good if they have their ptrs's as well as the social charges and frankly, conscripts with PPSs would be chewing these grenadiers to pieces. Now, sniper's trying to run away, but that four extra percent armor is keeping him alive. Tiga, in the meantime, he's going to announce himself in just a second here. Kitty's going to have claws. Three, two, one. Throwing around to the rear of the Soviet army, trying to make sure that the other targets make it towards him a little bit more before he really unleashes his full angry voice. And he picked up a kill, too, so that, that's, that's always a positive. SU-85, in the meantime, throws around to the side of him, not being particularly welcoming. He ignores it, instead throwing around over at these penal troops. And while the penals might be aggressing a little bit more, there is still at least one Ostman here. Where is the second one? Ah, yeah. He's up here to the north. SU-85 realizing it's probably not a good idea to tr really be that far forwards. And considering his commander is less than 100 tickets, even taking out a single Grenadier squad is not going to be cause for celebration. Here we go again. So more gun runs are happening, my friends. 3, 2, 1. 36mm cannons. Get it done. No. No. Shockingly enough, no. It's just going to keep his SU-85 back in base. Maybe the Osman is just going to sit up here and just throwing rounds like crazy into the infantry until the SU-85 comes forward to fight. If so, this is a great zoning tool because the SU-85 can barely move. But let's do a close air support. I am... a little bit stunned. A little bit stunned. Uh, and again... Dev M has been using it really, this whole entire Lightning War doctrine, purely just getting Gewehr 43s, as well as that Lake Amtiga, and that's that's a pretty good utilization, I would say. Adding in now the fact he's chased back this SU-85 multiple occasions, that's also pretty darn good. But considering the early part of this game, I think, honestly, what really lost it is the fact that this scout sniper, well, not this one, but the first scout sniper squad was the decision. I think that literally lost Talisman in this game. Sector. Which to me is always fascinating because you don't think that maybe something gained that early might lose you the game. But it's just, it's not a durable enough squad to be worthwhile in the long run. Pack 40 in the meantime is taking shots over at one of the SU-85s. Tiga does go down, but when the score is 30 to 340, it's very difficult to be alarmed at the loss of a single tank, Victory however powerful that tank is. The enemy has 25 points remaining. 
And 22 to 340. I'm wondering, will Talisman just tap out? No, this man is like a samurai. He's going down. If he's going to go down, he's going to go down with a sword in his hand. Ospins, in the meantime, just throwing crazy amounts of firepower at these charging penal troops. And I don't think... I think it's just going to be a bleed out. As these Ospins are now just annoying these guys to death. One, one by one, though, we're just going to see brave Soviet infantrymen just die. And at, what, about 30-30 on this map? Oh, come on. End at 30-30. No, it's not going to happen. Okay, so uh, at 30-32, we will see Talisman pulls out a big, fat W while facing off against Insane Dev M. Insane Dev M really just took control of the map early on and never let go. Unlike Jack, he clung for his life. To that map, and uh, this is this is what it gets him. So Talisman, as much fun as it was to see you play Soviet Reserve Army, um, I don't think you used it effectively, and that kind of makes me a little bit upset. But congratulations to Insane Dev M, and thank you, folks, so much for joining me for another episode of Company of Heroes Two Action. As always, if you have a game you want me to check out, email me at conorgaming at gmail .com with um, the replay. And if you don't know how to get the replay, search for that and it will tell you the file like directory and the path of how to find your replays to send to me in any case guys thank you so much for tuning in i'll see you all next time this is kyle Work signing off take it easy everybody